Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Exploring Hyperspace Lanes. Um, so, we had a little bit of an issue this week. Josie wasn't feeling well, and I was preoccupied on the days that she was available, um, dealing with a personal matter, and um, we couldn't get her episode recorded. But, just thought we have content this week. I was going through the archives, um of old episodes of 30 Minute Reviews and Beware of Spoilers. See if there's something we can put up that's good audio quality, because going through, there's there's some that aren't great. Like, there was an episode about Revenge of the Sith that we had that Josie sounds like she's talking through a robot. Um, and then there's, like, there's an episode of where we did A New Hope where the, the sound quality, like, it's not the quality's low, it's just I would have to sit there for hours and change the levels and all of that to make it listenable. But I found one that I think that um, will will keep people interested and, and will be an, an interesting thing this week. This episode was recorded in early January of 2016. Um, Peter and I did a Beware of Spoilers for um, for The Force Awakens the night it came out. We went Thursday night um, or Friday. No, we went Thursday night because on Friday I went home and then Saturday I went and saw it with my dad and my brother. Um, we went to see... Thursday night, we went to The Force Awakens, um, and we, um, we did a Beware of Spoilers right after. Josie couldn't be on because she was working, or she had, she couldn't go that night. She did eventually see the movie, um, uh, but when she had seen the movie, uh, Peter wasn't available. So what we did was we did a bonus episode of 30 Minute Reviews, um, about The Force Awakens, um, and, and that's what this is. This is the, the bonus episode from... The Force Awakens that we did on that 30 Minute Reviews uh, back in 2016. So Josie is a little opinionated on this, so just be aware of that. She's a little, um, a, a little vitriolic, let's just say. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, enjoy. Welcome to 30 Minute Reviews, I'm Adam. And I'm Josie, and today we're going to talk about the whopping pile of shit that is the new Star Wars movie, and if you haven't seen it, then... Take those earbuds out because we're gonna talk about how fucking shit this piece of shit is. Okay, let's try that with a little bit less uh, vitriol there. Um, <laughs> she hated it. I'm not sure if you can tell. She absolutely fucking hated this movie. Um, I as did my dad. For the record, my dad hated the movie too. It very well could have been decent, and I would have accepted the fact that they threw out everything that I knew and loved, but. They decided to just make it a whopping pile of shit. So if you'd like to start first before I swear and cuss out everything. Okay. Well, that, it seems a little late to prevent you from swearing and cussing out everything. Um, here's the pro- here's the thing with this movie. The movie is a solid movie. And it's a solid Star Wars movie. You're wrong. You know why it's a solid Star Wars movie? Because it's A New Hope with parts of Empire Strikes Back. And Return of the Jedi mixed in for good measure. That's why it's a solid Star Wars movie. Because people complain... So here's why the... it isn't. Okay, you, you can let me finish I'm first. Tell, I don't care, because you're totally wrong. Like, I just... Okay, go. Like, you're just... I, I Let me get my, my list you're, up. You're popping, like, seven veins in your head. Because... You sit down now, it's fine. You don't have to stand. Like, you, the words spewing out of your face are genuinely making me sick. Um... <laughs> But it's an accurate statement. The movie isn't Um, that bad. You're making it sound like it's a steaming... No, Attack of the Clones is worse. Number one, they completely lack an understanding of the Force. Would you like me to explain? I would, yes. Go ahead, explain. This bitch? (laughs) What the fuck is her name? Ray. Huh? Ray. I thought that was the, the bad guy. Kylo runs the bad guy. Sorry, Ray. Ray. Is... Ray. Anyways, this bitch, without this bitch. any sort of understanding or knowledge or training, is all of a sudden able to use an extremely advanced form of force energy and like. Like, when she waves her hand and, like, or not waves her hand, but, like, tells the guard, you know... Daniel Craig, for the the record. Leave the room and leave your gun. She's able to do this shit. She should not be able to do that shit. 
Okay, no. I'll agree with no. Here's that the is thing an about extremely advanced form of Go ahead. Here's the thing about Ray. Um I've been going back and forth in my head since I've seen this movie of is Ray uh, a character archetype called a Mary Sue. Um this is a word that if you do not want feminists to attack you, you do not use. I don't give a shit. A Mary Sue is let me find the actual definition. Um See, uh, while you're doing that, yeah, I could ahead. totally understand if she just happened to have this amazing, like, ability to channel the Force and use it and just have, not explosive, but, like, an extremely able, like... Or if she opened sorry, the, or if she very, opened the thing very herself. Very powerful with it. I can understand that, where she can, like, lift powerful things when her emotions are high, or... Or if she was, star, if she was Starkiller... Like if she was Star Killer, like from The Force Awakens, where she had Star Killer levels of power, where she could just like create four shockwaves or something like that, and she broke out that way, or she uh, un- loosened the chains she herself. Like, yeah, but like in, in in intense moments and stuff, where if she were just able to come up with this power, I could understand that. I could I could live with that, even though she has no training with it. I get it, but to be able to use something so advanced and complex as what the fuck is that called? Um, okay, I have the definition of Mary Sue while you figure that out. Uh, the mind um, tricks. The Jedi mind tricks. Jedi mind tricks, yeah. What a Mary Sue is, or if you're talking about a male character, it's Gary Stew or Marty Stew. Um, it, it refers to a character who is young or low rank, who uses unrealistic abilities for their rank um, to save the day. Um... Yes, actually, this entire movie is filled with that, but... Uh, I wouldn't go that far. So I the would, Black is just he, all of a sudden able to use a lightsaber, and this bitch is also pushing a button. able to use a lightsaber. It's pushing a oh, button. They're not force-activated. I understand that. Okay. But if you've read any of the books or have any... Which don't matter. I know, but... In the books, if anybody who doesn't have any sort of experience with a lightsaber attempts to use one, yeah, they can have it out. But the moment they try to, like, actually fight with it, they're more likely to kill themselves or hurt themselves than they are to hurt somebody else. And all of a sudden, she's able to... If I'm able to uh, get a point in edgewise here, I would yeah. like to refer to you uh, the great, uh, the greatest movie in the franchise, Episode Five, in which... Uh, Han Solo not only activates a lightsaber, but he uses it with precision without dismembering himself. Doing what? Cutting open the tauntaun. Oh, that's different. Um, I'm talking about fighting. I'm talking about here's, fighting. Here's the thing with the fighting with the lightsaber. Like I said, yes, they can have it open and like... Finn you know. gets fucked up, by the way. I would like to point out that... Finn is not, is by definition not, because he gets fucked up both times he uses a lightsaber. He gets fucked up by the traitor, um, the traitor stormtrooper, and then he also gets fucked up by Kylo Ren. Not fucked up enough. Okay, would you prefer he died? Yes. If they wanted it to be any sort of, like, have any sort of realism to that, he would have died. Okay. For the record, I would like to point out, Josie is asking for realism in a space fantasy movie. So, this guy... What the fuck is the new bad guy's name? Like Kylo, Kylo Ren? Ren? Kylo Ren is supposed to be so advanced and so good at using a lightsaber and the Force that he took down Luke and Luke's entire school of Padawans. He never said he took down Luke. Obviously, he would have had to fight it's Luke. It's implied that he had to fight Luke, but it's not. It's also uh, stated that he had Either like, way, five he other guys with him. Either way, he was supposed to be good enough to take down an entire school, a little school of Padawans. Okay. So his his lightsaber skills should be extremely good. And the choreography for these fight scenes were just a fucking mess. Well, that, so that comes back to should have been game. able to, like, in, like, one freaking swipe or whatever, gotten rid of, like, killed the little black guy or, you know, knocked him out or something. You know, we had 30-minute reviews like to call black people by their names. This character's I, called Finn. Finn, anyways. Or, you know, he should have been able to get rid of him in one little swing. And then this girl... Okay, 
So I get the fight scene being shitty and stuff because it seems like he's all at the very end of the fight scene or in the middle of it. He's like, you know, join me and stuff. So I'm like, oh, cool. So he was toying with her. And then all of a sudden they're not toying. He's not toying with her anymore. And she's got like a rage. But being able to channel more force does not make you better with a lightsaber, you fucking idiots. Okay, where is that established in the six movies, plus the Clone Wars and Rebels? That's common sense. It's not common sense when you're, coming to, when you're talking about fiction. I don't care. If that's, what, that's the way the books are. Okay, the books don't matter. I don't care. Here's, here's the I mean, other thing. This guy, this guy who's got so much training should not have even, like, it shouldn't even have been contest. Okay, if I can offer up a reason why he got fucked up or why he didn't do so well in that fight. Um, well, they do you were remember, like, do you remember how he got shot? A good movie. Remember how he got shot? Do you remember what he got shot with? Okay. Do you remember how that thing blew up seven troops, shot holes in armor, and killed people in one hit, and he took a shot to the chest like a champ? Well, he took a he didn't take a shot to the chest. He took oh, no, a shot. Oh no, I'm sorry. To the he took a shot to the to the abdomen. I'm sorry. Huge difference. No, you're right. It didn't one shot kill him. It it should have killed him, like it killed everyone I, else. He did that too, including ones with specialized armor. Was there blood? Yes. I'm extremely impressed that they chose to use blood. I'm not because it was a PG-13 movie. I am because the books are actually extremely gory. And none of the movies ever were. And I thought that was pretty because cool. Because they're children's movies. At their core, they're children's movies. In the same way Marvel is children's movies. I think I've made my point. Okay. Two. Okay, move on to two. Okay, so the lightsaber battles were extremely poorly choreographed. And I wouldn't so much say poorly choreographed as much as they were poorly. Fun. They looked really boring and shitty. It was and it was poorly shot, is what I would say. I think that they were really lame, and even at the even when it, he stopped like toying with her, and she got all like this fake force energy that all of a sudden made her be able to use a lightsaber better. It was still shitty. I have and a like, for you. if they hadn't have been separated, she was. It looked as though she was going to beat him, which is unrealistic. I have a question for you. Okay. Okay. So Yoda, Let's take a minute to talk about Yoda here for a second. Prequel Yoda, and specifically Episode Two and Episode Three. Prequel Yoda. When he's walking around, what is he doing? What do you mean? When he when he's walking when is what's his walk cycle when he's just walking from place to place which doesn't happen very often but when it does he's limping and he mm -hmm. has a cane and the reason when he when he's him. fighting he's using the force to channel to make his fighting better and make his lightsaber abilities better yes but it is still a form that you using a lightsaber is still a form that you need to be able to um like. Master and like they're 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 sequences that you need to have ingrained in you. You need to work with that before you're able to actually use it. I think the problem exactly. with the lightsaber problem. And the only thing is, is that like the force helps you to be able to fight, you know, fight better. And like you create a force shield, and it helps you do fight jump or sorry, force jumps and things like that. But, and, like, the power behind a swing, you can use the force to make, you know, what am I trying to say? Stronger. Thank you. Um, I was going to say bigger, better. <laughs> you can, it can punch gooder. You can punch gooder. But, um, um, but it doesn't make your skill and your technique with it any better, because that's something that's learned. Okay, uh, so just continue, because I feel like I'm never going to okay. get a word in edgewise that's not going to be immediately shot down, no matter how correct I am. Because so I just am. continue. Um, okay, so let's talk about um, the villain. What's his fucking, what's his name? For the fourth time, Kylo Ren. 
It's so he's so lame I can't even remember his name. Okay, how is he lame? First of all, don't get me wrong, I love I like the guy that played him. He's great in girls, Adam he's Driver. funny. Okay. You yeah. lost a little bit of legitimacy when you're talking down Star Wars and talking up girls, but continue. Anyways, I like him in girls because I'm a girl and it's funny, okay? Okay. Um, but he's too goofy to be any sort of, like, real villain. And it's just weird. But, um, yeah, here, here's the, here's a goofy way, so when he talks, you're like, why, how are we supposed to be intimidated by you or scared of you? Like, cause that's what, that's what's supposed to happen with a villain. You're supposed to, you know, think of them as intimidating as like powerful, but he just, he's just goofy. Got a goofy face, goofy voice. I think the ultimate mistake they made was taking the mask off on him. Uh, with the mask, he was fine. Yeah. Until like, the it, mask came off, he was a fine... Like, And here's the other thing. I have no problem with them doing a different um, personality type for the villain. Because really, up until this, it was Darth Sidious, who was just a guy pulling the strings. Mm-hmm. Um, Darth Maul, who we had who had no, literally no personality because he was just like an animal who fucking well, like, ripped person, shit apart. Uh, well, the, what ended up happening was the person who... Um was going to be Darth Maul, his lines got cut, and he was like, fuck it, I'm leaving. And so they just oh, yeah, had they his more do it, so then he just didn't say anything. Oh, uh, okay. Well, even so, he didn't have a personality. Count Dooku was basically just a lighter version he of the Emperor. was intimidating and scary. Right, no, 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 I'm not saying so he's not intimidating. Guy, he was just a, a field-level version of fast. the Emperor. Sorry. This guy could have been good if he didn't take off his mask. And then, like, you know, when he finally, like, turned to the light or whatever, because he is Han Solo and Leia's kid, he's got to come back. Um, and then he takes off his la- his mask, and then you see just, like, this goofy-looking kid. And it's like, wow, you know, as all of a sudden he turns to the light because you get to see his goofy face, you know? Here, here's the other, the other thing with, uh, with more of the villains. Grievous was the same villain. Um, even Anakin Vader in episode 3 was the same in terms of demeanor as all the rest. This is the first one with a different demeanor where he's a little bit more, like, he's still just as, like, intense when it comes to, like, ripping people's shit open, like when he kills um, Max von Sydow on Jakku in the beginning. But, like, he, he has lighter moments. Like, when he's on the, like, I liked when he was, like, on the ship with General Hux and it's like, um... Oh, um, are you sure your troops can handle it? And Huck starts saying, he goes, oh, they seem very adept at high treason, maybe we can have them do that. Like, it was, it was, I think it was refreshing to have a villain that wasn't the same, like, entirely all the time that intense. Okay. Like, I, 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 I want to see the, the villain be more human than be the, let's just kill everything for the sake of killing it. Like, let's take a minute, like, when he throws the temper tantrum, when it's, when it's, the whole sequence, when the other guy comes in and tells him that they escaped Jakku, and it's like, um, the droid escaped, um, it, uh, it, then, like, it stole a ship, and it's like, the droid stole a ship, and like, no, he had help from, uh, FN, whatever the fuck Finn's number is, and then he takes out his lightsaber and just fucks up the, um, the computer, mm-hmm. and it's like, anything else? And it's like, like, that was, like, it was a very, like, it was an in-character moment for what he is, because he's just a spoiled little brat. So it was a very, like, it was a very good, like, way for them to characterize this this person. Also, I'd like to point out, someone on a forum I was reading pointed out this, and I thought it was interesting, so I'm going to say it here. I'm going to try and find that post, that way I can, like, cite the guy who said it. Uh, he said that um, Kylo Ren is the opposite of Anakin. Um, because, like, Anakin would, um, what was it, Anakin would, like, go out of his way to be the hero, even if it was through villainous means. Kylo Ren goes through, like, to be the villain, like, he's going out of his way against what he is to be the villain, which is the opposite of what Anakin did. Anakin was a well was, like, a well-intentioned kid who just wanted to save his wife in the long run. I do think that, like... The idea of this character is very neat, and it's different, and it's cool to see something new. Mm-hmm. But... No, he shouldn't have taken the mask off. 
I don't think that they executed properly. No. You know, uh, this thread's like 400 things long. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. It was someone on the Jedi Council forums on the on the Force uh, mm -hmm. If you if you want to tweet at me, I will I will give you a citation in the next episode. So I guess we'll talk about you know touch upon same plot line. Yeah, that's that's my biggest problem with this movie because it it it's went too biggest, safe. But it's my biggest because here's the thing, it's it's episode like. When it came time for Han to die, I wasn't shocked. Because um, I, I got to that I point... I Han's going to die, but y you know that I have an issue with the way Han Solo died. Um, in the books, Han Solo like, fights his kid and defeats him. So, you know, I guess if he's going to die, in my mind, I'm like, well, he should have fought, you know? He should have tried to kill his son, and then his son takes him down in a blow. But... He didn't. No, I, I think out. this, was, this was the right way to do it. Because the books leading up to Han Solo's death had time to develop the conflict. Here, all we saw was Han got broken up so badly that he went back to smuggling after his son turned. That he, um, that now we have this whole, th like, he, now he goes and he, he just wants to bring his son back. And he, like, in the moment when, he, I think he just accepts his death in that moment. The only, yeah, I, I'm, I'm okay with it. The thing that bothers me is that um, in the books, when their son turns to the dark side, um, Leia and Han Solo's relationship becomes stronger. They don't like separate from each other, and you know, then they I, end up fighting their son together. So I don't know. I understand what the point of changing that would be you know well, i guess there's don't want it because it, but there could have been more there could have been just as many feels air quotes with having them be brought together to take down their son and like crying over his dead body being like where did we go wrong or something like that you know well here's um, the thing you can't have that happen because the other thing this is a redemption arc we have in Star War, in the current canon of Star Wars, there's one character who went from being a Sith to being a uh, being a, a good guy. Do you know who it is? It's Darth Vader. Nope. And Anakin. Well, not, not a, okay. That's not how I was going for. Someone who started as a Sith and turned and turned to being good. Not someone who was a Jedi turned Sith turned back. This is someone who was always a Sith at the beginning then turned to being a good guy. Okay, who? Asajj Ventress from the Clone Wars. Okay. She, they're going to they're going to basically do that with this movie. They're going to have. Oh, um, I mean, you can tell they were already hinting at the fact that he's coming back, and they've picked such a goofy character. He's got to, but then they showed his they, face and like what they. Well, I they guess he did any redemption how they arc. Could have fixed it was they could have been. And not change so much unnecessarily was they could have had them be close together and be like, you know, we need to take down what we brought into this world. He's causing so much harm and hate and disaster. And, you know, he goes in and he's like, son, you need to turn. You need to come back. And he goes, no, I've come too far or some of the shit like that. And then he's like, well, then. You're no longer my son. And starts shooting at him. And then he, like, deflects a little thing at him and, like, takes him down. And that's how he dies. That would have been so much more. You would have you would have felt so much more during his death for that. Well, I think the, the thing with, uh, they, with, w they needed to keep the movie within a certain time constraint was the, is the other issue. Which is why, just which like they... Fucked everything else up quickly. Um, I think they also tried to pack too much and introduce way too much. Wait, what, into what this. do you mean introduce too, too much? What 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 was introduced that was too much? Um, they tried to create this extra rivalry between fuck um Percy okay. Percy Percy um Weasley and um. It's Charlie Weasley or Bill Weasley, actually. I believe not. Not here's here's the th here's my biggest problem with uh, what they did in this movie. Why the fuck is the Resistance separate from the Republic? 
what purpose does that serve I other than being able to bl- yeah that in the opening crawl it's like um the new republic is doing x y and z and it's like princess leia leads a um i oh know general organa leads a um a brave resistance oh. against the first order why why the fuck does that need to happen? Why not just have them be the official army of the Republic? Because the clones work so fucking well in episode in the prequels. Just say, okay, we'll have a standing army of volunteers, which you have. Um, like I don't understand. Yeah, they changed a lot of things that really were didn't need to be changed. You know, they just did it to do it almost. It was very strange. Um, well, no, I understand so why that's... they. I understand why they had to cut out the extended universe because you it, it too much stuff would have been fucked up in the process of making movies that it had to adhere that well the movies wouldn't have to adhere to the extended universe but then select things would have to be cut out of the extended universe completely like okay they released this movie and the entire extended universe is still the way it is okay this movie's released the way it is the extended universe is released the same the same way it is um. This retcons out um, all the kids who were in existence. Jaina, Jason, Anakin, Ben, all of them. Retconned out of existence. Mara Jade, retconned out. Like, all of this shit that w- that happened has to be changed. That 30-year time skit, uh, skip between the two movies, that has to change too to accommodate this thing. The fact that the Republic is... Like, any story that has the Republic as a central focus in it has to be changed because that's not how it is in this one because it's not the republic it's the resistance anyways next oh. thing i believe the movie was too funny i disagree i don't okay well i figure you don't disagree with your own opinion yes how is it too funny uh, it there was just too much it was like it was all one big joke like I get all the nostalgia in it, and I mean, I, of course, I wanted that too, but I could have done without that more than I could have, have done without the jokes. It could have been more tasteful. It was too in your face. No, there were a but, few jokes that were, that didn't quite land. There, like there were, when, uh, when Finn's it, like, "What's this? What's this?" They had jokes though, like totally cut this um, Finn character out of it, or. I have such a problem with him, and I think that's he's black. my list. No, it's not because he's black. Um, it's partly because he's black. No, it's really not. My problem with him is that, so you were taken as a child, and uh-huh. you were raised to be a stormtrooper. During this, you have lost all form of self-identity. Okay, so some sort of it, something has stuck with you to cause you to see that things are wrong, you know? Um, What you're doing is wrong. Okay, I can buy that. Right. But I can't buy the fact that this guy has, you know, gone through all this training, which literally breaks him down mentally to not having a personality at all. Because he's supposed to be part of, like, a hive mind, almost. And he's so fucking outgoing and crazy and insane and makes stupid-ass jokes. That is not the way his character should be, psychologically. He made two jokes the entire movie. No, he didn't. He was a fucking crazy person the entire time. Oh, no, three jokes. I'm sorry, he made three jokes. He didn't really joke around. I think most of his comments he weren't even... Was his jokes, joke. his, his lines that were funny weren't him making a joke to I'm be funny. I'm not talking funny. about his lines, necessarily. No, he never made an outright joke through so? the entire movie. He, what he did was he said things that were in context funny because of the way, exactly. it, was, the way it was delivered. Like, that, that when he's like... When exactly. he's doing a thing to Phasma, he's like, I'm in charge now, Phasma, I'm in charge, I'm in charge. That wasn't him trying to be funny, that was a power play by him, because he never had that kind of power. Like, it just came off as funny in the movie because of how Harrison Ford, like, it but, backed down, kid. But, he shouldn't have been so outgoing and fucking nuts. He should have been quieter, more reserved, because that's how, since pretty much birth, he has been raised to be. He wasn't quite Does it really quite... make sense for him to be so outgoing and fucking nuts all the time? 
He wasn't really at outgoing. All? He was like Yes, he was. He was extremely outgoing and crazy and loud and just insane the entire time. He wasn't reserved, he wasn't collected ever, which is what he's been trained since fucking birth almost to be. Okay, continue. Do you agree or no? Fuck? No, I disagree. I I liked Finn's character. So you think it makes sense for him to be so fucking nuts? He wasn't nuts. He was insane the entire time. He was a fucking wreck. Always. Okay, no, that... You've... No, he was not. You're you're just wrong on this. I think you need to go and watch it again, because... I've seen it, I've seen it three times, you've seen it once. I saw it yesterday. I can tell you that Finn acted exactly the way you'd expect him. They didn't erase uh, their personalities completely. What they... Like, it's not a hive mind like the clothes. But during... He's been with these people who have been training him okay, since... You're acting like, he like was, it's... Very Here's young. the problem. You're still acting like it's a clone mindset. It's, they're not clones. This I'm isn't not Commander that, Cody. But Even I'm in the Clone Wars, the clones person, have personalities that are distinct. And what time are we at here on this? Any person who minutes. was taken as a child and raised by somewhere else, somewhere else in a military setting that is like no nonsense, hive mind, and tries like gets rid of all form of personality would not be like this. Okay. I respectfully disagree. And Continue. You're quite wrong. But, my next one... We have 15 minutes, keep in mind. I want to talk about fan theory. He was a teenager. He was taken as like a five-year-old. Okay, continue. <sighs> Plot was rushed. I already said that. Um... They played off people's nostalgia way too much. I mean, it was just played off poorly, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, the poor guy. The poor guy was poorly. Th the black guy was poorly thought out and fucking useless, and over emotional for a stormtrooper. Um. She's reading her own thoughts, by the way. Not an official review by anyone. Han Solo dying was. A shit storm. Um, talk about that. I believe that. It, okay, so the acting, even my mother, who's not really keen on picking that kind of shit up, and neither am I, noticed that the acting was shit. Like, okay. most of it. And I, I will offer you this. Did you yeah, like, have the same people... thought about Attack of the Clones? Did you think Attack of the Clones had shitty acting? No, because I love it. Okay, you're done. You you you've lost all credibility on this. It is Anything. universally accepted as a fact to the point where there is no one on the planet who goes, you know, who did a great job acting in this movie? Hayden Christensen. No, that movie is the epitome of bad acting. If you're going okay. to teach someone how to act poorly, show them their performance in that fucking movie. You know the proof of that? Watch the fucking gag reel where they have more chemistry and when they fuck up than when they are actually recording lines. I will give you that. Okay. Okay. The only reason why I have such a big problem with this thing, it, with this movie, is because there's so many things wrong with it, and it's so shitty. The majority but, of your problems wrong with it seem to be stemming from the fact that it's not the books. So? And it's because you were spoiled by the books that you didn't like it, okay? Like, a, that's not a criticism of the movie, it's a criticism of your interpretation of the movie. No, okay? there have been plenty of things that say, like this fucking black guy who shouldn't have fucking even been in it. Okay. And then, Here, okay, would it have solved the problem with the black guy if he came in in the next movie, and in this movie we see him develop a friendship with the stormtrooper that dies in the beginning? Anyways, Han Solo dies like a little exactly. bitch, and then, so acting was pretty shit. Like, you have to admit. No, I don't have to admit, because that, that's a wrong statement. That, this is the best we've seen Harrison Ford since. characters didn't even sound excited. They were like, oh no, my ship's going down there was no urgency nothing this is the best acting i've seen harrison ford do since i'm not talking I would about say, ford. the last crusade okay daisy ridley did a very good job in this movie she doesn't so get enough BB credit for playing a character with no flaws it didn't help whatsoever who bb8 the stupid robot yeah i get the comic relief and everything but why have him has comic relief as well as this black guy who was funny every fucking second he was on camera 
BB-8. Anyways, BB-8 BB didn't do anything. There was no BB-8 use for him as much as R2-D2. R2 D2 actually does shit though. Okay. He like extends okay. his little okay. arm and you have to melts. you have to not look at oh wait no be, uh, never mind. R2 D2 yeah. do shit so, in episode in episode 4. Okay, never mind. R2 D2 used to be helpful and R2 D2 had the rest of the map. BB8 all he did was hold this one little piece of map that happened to fit perfectly in with the other Yeah, that was... Okay, that, that's another problem I had, too. <laughs> but all he did was hold on to this little piece of, like, in a sense, a USB thing that anybody could have hold, held on to. So why the hell was he there? If they were going to have him as comic relief, then this black guy shouldn't have been so goddamn funny. You, you know what the problem, the, the thing with the map is? Okay, this makes it sound a lot less dumb when you hear the actual explanation as to why the map is the way it is. Um, the map is, um, that, what's his name, has in his, um... R2-D2? R2-D2 has in his stuff, is a complete ga map of the galaxy that was from the Republic that got transferred to the Empire that he pulled when he was on board the Death Star. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. This new, the map that BB-8 has is the missing part of that map. That was cut for whatever reason. Why couldn't they cross-reference it against an existing map they have? Because the the um, the Rebellion doesn't have a complete map of the galaxy. Okay. That's how they explained it in the there book. There was no point for BB-8 to be there. He, oh, did, okay. he was no help whatsoever. He didn't shock anything. He didn't kill anything. He didn't make... He shocked. He didn't do he any shocked. sort of... Finn, he shocked Finn. You're wrong. Okay. He didn't shock Finn. Oh gosh, sorry. Um, he didn't like hack anything or help them in any sort of way. This girl was all they needed for that. Yeah, he I'm literally sure. did nothing but hold a little USB drive that anybody else could have carried. Archer D could have carried it. And he would have carried it like a boss as well as helping them out. Yeah, Archer D two wouldn't have fucked up releasing releasing those weird things. In yeah, the, in the freighter. The boss. Okay. Do you have any more thoughts before we go into fan theory with the last? I don't know. Go ahead. Ten minutes. Okay, so we'll do fan theory now because I really wanted to cover this. This is what I was most excited about with this movie, because being that it's Star Wars, everyone is fucking related. Like, um, that, that, whole that's theory is that Anakin slash Darth Vader is this guy. This the. What is that? He's the holo hologram or something, but he's dead. Snoke. Okay. Snoke. No, you're right. And I've seen Star... You're right. Nowhere in any of the canon movies has there been a character who can cheat death. You're right. Never mind. I mean, they can come back as... Um, Never has there been like a character that driven the boat. plot because they were able to create life and uh, create life and preserve life through the midichlorians. They can the Force... They can, and they can create projections of themselves, but that's about it. No, that's just an incorrect statement based on Revenge of the Sith, which I watched last night. In Revenge of the Sith, you very openly have the story of Darth Plagueis the Wise, who is who I think General uh, uh, Supreme Leader Snoke is. I think he is a, re like, uh, a brought back to life version of Darth Plagueis. Why? Because Darth Plagueis' entire thing, and the thing that drives Anakin switching to the dark side, is that he can preserve life, and he can bring people back from the dead. That's his thing. And, the biggest piece of proof that he's, um, there's only one character in the entirety of Star Wars referred to as Wise, and it's Darth Plagueis the Wise. What does, uh, Kylo Ren say to Han Solo on the catwalk? The Supreme Leader is wise. Fuck you, he's Darth Plagueis. Yeah, but you were gonna say he was Darth Vader. Oh, well, no, he, um, okay. Darth Plagueis in personality. The picture that I sent you... I don't know why you're telling me to go fuck myself when you gave your explanation and I was gonna agree with you, so... Oh, okay. Because um, you hadn't actually given me that one. So fuck you! Okay. Just the return to telling me to fuck myself for no fucking reason. Okay, so... Um, the, another picture I found online today had a comparison of, um, Anakin at the end of episode 6 when he takes the mask off 
the Vader mask off, and you see his scars and Darth Plagueis. Um, funnily enough, the scars match up. And... Unless you think that this... Unless you think that whoever this... Who's the who's the big hologram guy? Supreme Leader Snoke. Okay. Unless you think that Snoke is a force projection rather than a hologram. I think he... I think, here's the thing, we only, like, throwing out the entire extended universe, what we know is that good guys can become force ghosts, every single force ability has a mirror on the other side of the force, except for the ability to become force Did projections. Did you say force ghost? Yeah, that's the term. Force ghost is what Obi-Wan was in, in episode 5 and 6, Yoda, don't fucking look at me like that, that's the term, force ghost. If you'd like, Okay. Okay, hang on. It sounds okay, we don't, ridiculous, we don't have time. But... Oh, okay. That's what sounds ridiculous in Star Wars. That's what sounds ridiculous. That's just... where you go, no, you know what? This is fucking dumb. No. Maybe that's... it's because I've never heard that term. But it's in the fucking I... movie. All I've ever heard is that it's just they can live on through the Force and they're able to project themselves on occasion. Force ghost. On the Star Wars wiki. But that makes it sound like he's a ghost. It is. No, it he lives is. on the Force. And not everything does. Not everything has the ability to continue to use and learn from the Force when they're gone. And just live in the Force and live through it. Okay, so anyway, I'm not even going to continue arguing this. I found the, the Wikipedia page. I will send it to you. That way you can look at this at okay, your I'm not fighting you. I don't know why you get so sensitive. Okay. I was just like, that's a funny term. That's okay. all. You anyway, get so sensitive. I think what, this, what uh, Snoke is, is Darth Plagueis was thought to be killed in uh, during episode one, that's you when he dies. Um, that's when um, Palpatine kills him. Um, he doesn't die he becomes Force Matter or something like that, whatever the Sith version is of a, for, of a Force Ghost. He lives through the Force. Okay, whatever you want to fucking call it. He becomes that, and then when um, Anakin dies in Episode Six, he's like, ooh, a strong Force user with an actual body that hasn't exploded, and he inhabits it. No. Yep. No. Okay, what's your... What, what's your... What's your... Um, so if that's something that you want to go with, okay, I can accept that he has come back. Uh-huh. I can accept that, but I can't accept that he's stolen another body and I... like reanimated it because his his body disappears. We don't see Anakin's body disappear. Yes, we do. No, we do not. It's gone. Okay, you say it's gone. We don't see it disappear. If he's able. To reappear as a force ghost, Mm -hmm. then his body is gone. Okay. Because that's, and we do see that previously with Yoda. And Obi-Wan. I'm not disputing that. What did Anakin have that the other two didn't? Anakin had used the dark side. Okay, but not 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 just that. He has That's not where I was going. I only went with four metal limbs and a bodysuit that kept him from dying. But okay, let's go with dark side then. But no, I can't. I can't accept reanimation. I, I it's can not accept reanimation. It's... Reanimation is the same consciousness of the original person, or the body moving with uh, complete autonomy. Without anyone. This is possession. Okay, then I can't accept possession. Okay? Okay. I can accept that maybe... Yeah, we need to move on. We have three minutes. That he's done something with the Force and gone to an extremely powerful um, dark side Force place. Like one of the origins or something. And been able to get a body from, I don't know, like, been able to get a, gather enough dark we, energy. We need to hurry this up. We need to talk about Ray. We have two minutes to very quickly, who do you think Ray is? Ray's Luke's daughter. 
Okay. Yeah, that's because they that's talk about that in in Disney Infinity. Yeah. Disney Infinity. I don't know if they talk about it, but Kylo Ren says "face me, cousin," to mm -hmm. uh, Ray, which means she's probably, of course, Disney Infinity is a non-canon video game, which means what happens there doesn't matter to the canon, even in any weird uh, any weird structure, it doesn't matter. But it's a good indication of what's going to come. There's also a possibility that she's the equivalent of Jan uh, Jaina Solo, which I would not entirely be against if they did that. Did you? Is Boba Fett alive? Oh yeah, forgot about that. Boba Fett possibly alive. We don't really have time for this, um, because uh, Battlefront is canon. Boba Fett appears at the Battle of Jakku in Battlefront, therefore he's possibly still alive. Oh cool. Yeah. Um, I was saying, no? fucking loving Battlefront, by the way. I take everything back about what I said about Battlefront. I fucking love this game. Granted, I'd love it more if the PlayStation Network wasn't down and I could play Fighter Squadron. I fucking rule with that. Okay, we are we have a minute 30 to go. So, um, let's see what we have in the next few weeks. Uh, oh, that's NBC. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm watching a video of a raccoon accidentally dissolves his um, cotton candy. Oh, I saw that. That's... <laughs> He's like, what the fuck? Okay, um. Oh, he's we all have... like, no, come back. Alright, so next few weeks, we have Fantastic Four, Inside Out, and Lord of the Rings, the Complete Trilogy Extended Edition, courtesy of fucking Peter. Um, what else do we have? Um, in uh, Follow me on Twitter, because uh, Josie doesn't use Twitter, uh, at AdamTaylor792. Um, you can also follow the show at 30MinReview. Um, and yeah, the, we will be back next Tuesday with... Fantastic Four, so, I mean, don't get your hopes up too high.